Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's actually great because uh, I spend a lot of time on the road. I'm at about 105,000 miles this year already. It's not as bad as my worst year, 380,000, but uh, the sad thing is I'm still staying here and my kids are 20 miles away, so hopefully maybe they'll come and surprise me. So I'm Robin Brandle. Uh, been with Cloud Jumper exactly two weeks. Prior to that, I spent a number of years. I started my IT career here in Jacksonville. Went to high school here. Was pretty close to being born here, uh, and love it here. So anytime I can talk to and meet with other uh, IT folks, I take that very seriously, especially here. Um, but being that. I spent so much time in local IT, it made me want to learn more and talk to other companies about how they're doing things. And one thing, uh, my first job in IT of going from mainframes to PCs taught me was how important those end users are. My second day on the job in IT, uh, the VP of IT came up to the help desk and was looking for somebody and I just happened to be this poor schlep that wasn't on the uh, floor. He said, hey, you need to follow me. He walked me down to accounts payable, put a chair in the uh, head of account payables uh, cubicle, and said, you need to sit here until her computer breaks. So I said, why? She, he said, because this is the most important person. She pays the bills. And it really drove home how important it was. And it just happened that their group of PCs were built by a different person and had one error and it was causing all of their machines to drop just randomly. The only way we were able to find it was I sat there for three days. One of the most boring parts of my career, but at the same time, it really drove home how important those end users are to the business, and that without them, IT doesn't really have a place, right? Why are we there? And it really focused my career around end user computing. A number of years ago, I became a uh, big fan of centralized computing, and as you can tell from this picture, um, I went to the mountaintop for desktop virtualization in the cloud, and I came down with all this growth, because it's really cool stuff and it's helping organizations around the world. I've heard some great stories that I'll get to share with you today. But this is one of the things I talk about with uh, digital transformation. How many of you guys think it's hard? Digital transformation's not hard for anyone? Okay, All right? I've, I've heard the words impossible, unattainable, uh, what is digital transformation? And I know it means a lot of different things to a lot of people, but this is something that's stuck with me all my life. Uh, if you're familiar with the Navy Minesweeper, my dad came home with two of them one day. My mom said, what did you do? And uh, he said, hey, this is gonna be my new business. And a couple years later, I used to help him on the weekends, cut these minesweepers out. And this was the happiest day of my life when I was 16. Because from the time I was 11 till the time I was 16, almost every weekend I was on this thing, and I came down to the dock, and I found it at the bottom of the ocean, or the, the port. Win for me. So I looked at my dad, and I said, hey, I guess we're done here. He goes, no, we're going to float it. I said, it's at the bottom of the river. How are we going to do it? And he said, we're going to do it. Funny thing is, not many people are lucky to have the day they decided they wanted to do computers on actual film. Because I can tell you after this, I went home and worked on computers harder than I ever did. And I've been doing it ever since. But my dad taught me what looked impossible was actually attainable. And we actually floated that thing in nine hours with a pump and a crane and a chain. Didn't have all the proper tools to do marine salvage, but we found the tools that we had and we put them together and made it work. And I talk to a lot of people about any project I ever come against, I, I tend to go back to this uh, because it reminds me what it's like to be underwater with your face in the mud digging and uh, that anything can be attained. So what is a cloud workspace? How many of you are familiar with VDI? Most people. Uh, Cloud Workspace is just a new name for a desktop in the cloud, but instead of just a desktop in the cloud, it's everything your users need in their desktops and to move them to the cloud. And at Cloud Workspace, um, that's what we're focused on, is being able to deliver 
uh, workspace as a service and allow organizations to deliver that same service to their end users. So it helps with a number of things, but it helps you move a lot of those applications that may be preventing you from being more agile in an environment to put all your applications in uh, for Windows environments. One thing to note is somebody said to me recently, oh, Windows is dead. And I said, no, that was like five years ago that statement came out, nine years ago. If anything, we've seen more and more how important Windows is in the organization. But it doesn't mean it's the only solution that's working for enterprises today. Uh, I know a lot of people who have iOS applications but may have one Windows app that they just can't get rid of, right? This helps with that transition. Uh, the other stat that I like to talk about with cloud desktops and why I'm such a big fan of this is, as I said, I started out moving people from the mainframe to PCs. And that end user said, I don't care that that thing's got color and graphics and can play solitaire and all these other things. I need what I need to do my job. And I also heard the mainframe was going away, right? See it all the time. But one thing to note is Microsoft recently said there are 16.5 million Windows applications that are out there that Microsoft is aware of. Win32 applications, it's gonna be a long time before those apps are out there, but Microsoft's also innovating and bringing a lot of great things to the platform and to the Windows desktop. We're seeing this all with the transition to the cloud taking even faster because, you know, as we all know, a lot of times applications perform better when they're right next to the application servers. And we've seen, and Gartner's even seen, this pickup from on-prem desktop virtualization to the cloud desktop and that being because of all the benefits that it's bringing to their organization and moving that CapEx to more of an OpEx spend too. So some of the key benefits of a cloud workspace, security and regulation. Does anyone have big security regulations in here? Anyone worried about security every day they wake up? Everybody is. I spoke to uh, some recent customers who've been attacked by malware. Part of the reason they're moving there is that was the only way they were able to recover quickly uh, with malware and security, things like that. Uh, I'm gonna touch on other things like shadow IT, right? That tend to make security hard. I can tell you, uh, I'll tell you a good story about it later, but shadow IT can actually be your friend. A lot of people try and stamp it out. I've had a lot of these conversations with organizations really lately because of digital transformation. How many people have a shadow IT org that they're aware of in their organization? Only a couple? I can guarantee you there's more out there, right? Uh, Elastic Workforce, m and I just read that there was more uh, money spent in m and in the first half of this year, over $10 billion than any other year in the past 50 years. I think this year it was like $10 trillion uh, so far in mergers and acquisitions. And you know, that's a big burden for a lot of organizations. When you're looking at uh, bringing on a new business, I know I spoke to a customer six weeks ago who their digital transformation for their business was acquiring another business that was technology, technologically advanced in their space but the, problem, the challenge was, how did they get them integrated and get the rest of their organization bringing those solutions to market? And by moving those, that organization into the cloud and moving their desktops into the cloud, they were recognizing uh, ROI on that acquisition a lot quicker than they ever had planned to. Uh, some other things too, I had a conversation yesterday um, with someone who said, hey, do you know of any ML guys or um, AI guys? I said, yeah, I know of a couple. He said, do you think they'll move to uh, Michigan? And I said, ah, there are Florida people, and I know I've lived in Jacksonville my whole life. I've always said, if you see nuclear, people ask me all the time, have you left Jacksonville? I said, if you see nuclear, thermonuclear detonation in Jacksonville, that's probably about the time I'll move, because uh, I love it here. But because of these new technologies, it gives the ability, I haven't worked in an office in 14 years, worked out of my desk and using these technologies. It also helps people find this talent instead of trying to pass on talent because they can't come to the office, right? 
It's a big change. I've had a lot of conversations with really. BYOD, specialized workloads, and one thing that I wanted to touch on that were, you know, is big in the news lately. Does anyone know, I know it's a small picture, have an idea of what that building might be at the end on the left? I know it's small, I was gonna blow it up, but I didn't have the opportunity. Uh, that's the bank in Panama City, Florida. Uh, you think they're gonna be able to get to their desktops to service customers and clients, right? It's one thing a lot of times I've learned over the years is that, that building itself becomes the thing that everybody forgot about, was how are we gonna get to it? So, there's also been some big news in this space. Is anyone here familiar with Microsoft's announcement at Ignite at the end of September? Windows Virtual Desktop, show of hands. It's the biggest secret, one person, he works with me. All right, so Microsoft made a massive announcement at uh, in Ignite, 2018 in Orlando. And it's funny to me, because a lot of people haven't picked up on what this means for the desktop and desktop as a cloud market. Microsoft announced that they're creating an Azure service for VDI and remote desktops. That enable, also enables Windows 10 multi-user, so you can have manage one virtual machine for hundreds of users, instead of having to deploy that 100 machine thousands of times. Right, so, and that it'll run in Azure, and one of the key pieces of it is you're only paying for what you use, right? Another thing they uh, added, which is big for a number of organizations I've been talking to over the past few years, is support for Windows 7 with extended security updates. There's a, a word that's usually not associated with Microsoft in that, free, right? I can say that, I spent five years at Microsoft, so, um, I can tell you free is not something you see a lot. So for, they announced that for customers who are behind on their migration from Windows 7 to Windows 10, can move those desktops to Azure and get the free extended support that you'd normally have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for. At least that's what I paid when I did it with 2,000 uh, extended support years ago, right? And I don't think they dropped their prices. Right? But it's a big benefit to organizations that are trying to move off of these old platforms and need a place to put them. Uh, capabilities for deploying full desktops and apps integrates with Microsoft 365 and will be a benefit. These licenses will be a benefit of Microsoft 365 and running your desktops in Azure. So Cloud Jumper architecture, what does our architecture allow customers to do? It gives them that flexibility to use multiple clouds to provide the desktop environments that they need to run their Windows applications, whether they're published apps, published desktops, VDI, we don't care, we help you deliver this for your end users. But just to touch on a couple of uh, topics I've had a lot of conversations with, with organizations around desktops in the cloud lately and digital transformation, this one has surprised me the most. So, does anyone know what shadow IT looks like, what the, they look like, right? I always have this, when I hear shadow IT or rogue IT, I, I have this uh, thought of like people in ski masks and stuff like that. That's what they look like. Now, Paul was shocked earlier, but that actually, that little skinny guy on the far right for you guys, that was actually me. It was my second job in IT. I was part of a shadow IT organization. I didn't know what shadow IT meant at the time, but the business had a major need, and so they brought this team, ragtag bunch of people together, and we put in a lot of major systems that helped run that telecommunications company. And IT hated us, right? Because we were doing all this stuff but what we were doing is, uh, it hit me years later that I was shadow IT, but the thing I always remember was how much our users told us they loved us. Because we understood the business. This is the number one thing I find when I talk to CIOs, directors, IT staff, even the help desk, is they don't understand what their business does. They understand I may be a railroad or a transportation company or telecommunications company, but they, they think that that's all they do. They don't 
a lot of times realize that the guys that work on trains have much different needs than the sales folks, right? And by engaging these organizations and adopting a platform that gives them the ability to deliver to their users, you actually have the best resource, in my opinion, that you could ever find within your organization because they understand what that business group is doing. I've talked to more and more people who are actually bringing these people into their organization and saying, hey, we want you, not we're trying to get rid of you. Can you help us? And I'm also talking to more organizations where they're looking at putting their architects actually in the business to give them the opportunity to grow their careers and maybe something that's interesting to them that they don't know today, but that helps the company and keeps talent in-house and helps them grow the business and transform the business. Uh, one of my close friends works for an uh, electric company, and he had a passion for drones. He, he played drone, with drones all the time. And he went in and showed years before anyone else was doing it, hey, what if we use this with storms? Now, I don't know if you've seen, but most uh, power companies have the capability and are starting to use drones and drone technologies as well as lots of other organizations who would have never thought, you just said, why do they need a drone? But because he had that passion and he understood the business, he went to IT and said, hey, we can do this for the business beforehand. And so they had one of the best projects that they, you know, in terms of ROI and customer satisfaction and the business thanking IT instead of saying, you know, you guys are preventing me from doing my job. And the other thing that's been very front and center in my conversations with customers is disaster recovery and business continuity. Because more and more organizations are finding out that, you know, there's what, fires going all over California, uh, here in Jacksonville. We were watching Michael, and last year we had a pretty bad hit. Uh, and what I've found over the years of talking and meeting with customers is that they actually don't think about that desktop, right? Because it's, oh, we go get another one, things like that. But this stat is something that stuck with me since the first time I heard it, is 93% of the businesses that lose their data center for 10 years go bankrupt within one year. I've seen big companies go under because of the fact that they had all, everything replicated, reloaded, all the application servers were waiting, but the users had nowhere to go. I met with a customer a year ago who they were just doing some internal decor, interior design on their building and found that there was a faux wall around the core of their building and the entire core of their building was wrapped in asbestos. No one was allowed to go back into that office that, from that day forward. So here they have 2,000 PCs, where are they going? They were able to spin up a cloud desktop solution and have their users work in, in six days. Luckily that wasn't the whole company there, it was just a division. But these are things that happen to businesses all the time that in my wildest dream, I would have never thought of. So some of the others, time to value. Uh, we've seen customers, I know when I was doing uh, architecture and I rolled out a big desktop virtualization environment, uh, one of the biggest challenges we always had was buying all this hardware, finding the space for it, we got it in, and then it's, hey, capacity management team calling me and saying, oh, you know, you're only using 85% of your environment daily. You know, you need to scale that back. We can't scale that back. We have to have that high watermark in case everybody logs in at the same time. Now in the cloud, you have that capability to say, hey, if users want to log in, we have all the capacity we need and we're only paying for what we're actually using. Or another example where a customer just spun up 8,000 desktops in four weeks. Uh, I know I've been doing this for a long time. No way to do it. 8,000 PCs in that frame of time, physical PCs that you're meaning. And you know the other benefits of security, knowing where people who are coming in and out, data leakage helps with all of these different things. And then what's in it for your customers, right? Your customer is IT and the end users, right? So by moving to a cloud desktop, not only will it help you with all these things in terms of digital transformation, being more agile in your environment, uh, being able to find 
better workers, disaster recovery, but you know, the TCO running the business, giving more money to focusing on new projects, but not only money for focusing on new projects, an environment that's agile for those new projects. So um, I'm here the next three days. I encourage you, to, if you have any questions about desktop virtualization or cloud workspaces, to stop pulling me off to the side. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, spend a lot of time in this space, and uh, I appreciate your time today. <laughs>